Well, not very many of us. I think the rest of us probably need to go. That's as high as you can go in the state of Maine. Uh, how many of you uh, have been to the lowest place in the state of Maine? Anybody know where that is? I don't. Oh, well, so maybe I've been there and don't realize it. I don't know. I've been to the lowest place in the United States, which is? Death Valley. Death Valley is the lowest place. And I've been to the lowest place on the planet Earth, which is, um, at least on the land spots, which is the Dead Sea, uh, down in the Dead Sea Valley, is as low as you can go. Um, but that's not anywhere like the lowest place that there is, because those places are somewhere else. Uh, I've been down. Have you ever looked into a cave or a deep hole and wonder, what's down there? What's inside that cave? Is it dangerous in there, or is it beautiful in there? Are there? Is there treasure? Did you ever dig for buried treasure when you were a kid? Do you ever think about how deep you are? The first time I ever did real caving, not the kind where you walk through with a tour guide, but the kind where you slither through on your back with your hands on the ceiling above you, was laying there on a pile of rock, only this much space, just enough to crawl through, and uh, one of the people in front of me got stuck, so we had to wait. I was afraid we were going to have to wait two weeks for him to lose enough weight to get through, but he managed to squeeze through. But while I'm laying there, I'm thinking about the fact that I have no idea how deep under the earth I am, nor how much there is above me. And if there was just a little bit of a shift in the tectonic plates, it would squash me like an ink spot. I thought about that while I was laying there. I didn't like it. How deep is, uh, how deep is Lake Auburn? Um, anybody guess how deep Lake Auburn is? Deepest point? That's about 118 feet. How, uh, how deep is Sebago Lake? It's about, about 350 feet at its deepest point. How about the Sea of Galilee? Anybody want to take a guess as to how deep that is? It's really about 141 feet deep at its deepest point. So not nearly as deep as Sebago Lake, although it's about the same size and shape as Sebago Lake. Um, the Gulf of Maine, the average depth of the Gulf of Maine is 450 feet. That's a long ways down. Would you go? How would you like to dive to that level and see what's down there? Not much to see because there's not much light down there. Most of the time we spend floating only on the surface of things. We see the surface of the ocean. We're all familiar with that. But we don't know much about what's down under there. Do you ever think about it? Do you ever think about what's down below? What there might be down in the bottom? Well, here's this story we read today that takes place by the lake shore the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Gennesaret, it's not a sea, it's a lake. It's a small freshwater lake, uh, about the size of Sebago Lake, as I said, but not nearly as deep. But still, a beautiful spot. And I picture this story taking place on one of those days when the breeze is coming across the lake. And you know that smell? You know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? The smell of a lake in the summertime when the wind comes across? And I'm picturing that happening because a large crowd has gathered. And I think if it wasn't breezy enough, maybe they wouldn't stay there. But this large crowd has gathered because they want to hear what Jesus of Nazareth has to say to them. And he is speaking, and uh, they're trying to listen to him and try to hear what he says. And finally, Jesus comes up with an idea. Uh, how many of you have ever sat by the edge of a lake or pond and listened to the conversation taking place on the other side? You know how you can do that on a quiet night? Well, this is what Jesus remembered. And so there were some fishermen there with some small boats. He got into one of the boats, said, just pull a little way from shore. And he used that natural amphitheater to talk to the people with. He uh, talked to them for a while, just possibly to keep from getting crushed by the crowd as well. And now, when he's finished, he gives his blessing to them. And then he says to the fishermen who he was with, would you go out and let your nets down? Go out and fish a little bit. Why do you think he did that? Why do you think he asked the fishermen to go back out and fish? Yeah, why? Was he hungry? I don't know. What do you know about what, the, what did the fishermen reply when Jesus said, go out in the water? What did he, they say back to him? Who knows the story? 
We spent all night fishing and we didn't get anything. And apparently in that uh, part of the lake, the fish come out at night. And they spent all night and they didn't catch anything. So they're not particularly anxious to go back out again and do all the work involved, row out there again, drop the nets, do all of that. They don't really want to do it. But Jesus is, but Saint, uh, Simon Peter says, we did this already. But if you say so, I'll do it again. So they go out and decide to do what Jesus asks. Why? What would you have said? Here's this guy. He's not a fisherman. The best we can think of is he knows how to build things out of wood. They don't know how to fish. He comes to this town. He's not from your town. He's an outsider. He comes to your town. He tells you to how to do your job. And what do you say? Who are you? Yeah. He says, yeah. If he shows up at your office, Darby, and he says, you know, this program that you put together, that's all wrong. Let me show you how to do that. Yeah. I, I, I know Darby. She's going to be nice, and she's going to politely send him on his way. <laughs> Which Simon Peter really wanted to do, but Jesus didn't take the hint. So out they go, back out into the lake. They drop their nets over the side of the lake. They wait a few minutes, and then when they try to pull the net up, it doesn't come. First question is, have we snagged a rock that we somehow didn't know about all our lives fishing out here? There's a rock in this spot we didn't know was here. Have they snagged that? But then the net begins to shimmy, and they realize they've got a net full of fish. And they pull it in. There's so many fish that they have to call their partners still on the shore to come out with their boats and help them to catch all of these fish to bring them all in. Simon Peter is very touched by what he saw happen. We don't know why. As soon as the boat was safe again, as soon as they got the fish loaded on and the boats weren't going to sink, he falls to his knees, he looks at Jesus and he says, you need to get far away from me. I am a sinful man. Simon Peter took a look into his soul. He compared his soul to Jesus's. He didn't like what he saw down there. He knew what was in the depths of his heart. And he couldn't bear to be with someone whose life was so beautiful, whose thoughts were so pure, and whose actions are so powerful. And this story means something to us today. Because when we open our lives up spiritually, it takes us deep. I'm thinking about what it was that Simon Peter had in the depths of his soul that he didn't want Jesus to see. What was it, do you think, in his past? What was it that he had done or said or thought? What do you think it was that made Simon Peter say, Jesus, you shouldn't even be with me? What do you think was in there? What do you think, Aaron? Yeah? Broke some laws, it's a possibility. He could have been the kind who did that. What do you think, Rose? He wasn't good enough. He sure wasn't good enough. He knew that for sure. What do you think might have been in the back of his mind or down in the depths of his soul that he didn't want to be compared to Jesus? What do you think he might have done? What do you think, how many of you think he might have done something that you've done or are doing? Could be. So opening yourself up to God means that you are going to have to examine those things in your life and look deep and go deeper and deeper. And that's why church is so often so boring. Because we want to stay on the surface. We just want to deal with the stuff on the top. We don't want to look deep, really deep right now. If I said, today we're going to have everybody stand up and tell the secret in their soul, how many of you would stand up and head for the door before you did that? Well, don't worry, I'm not going to ask that of you. But one of the reasons church gets boring is because we will not take a look at what's really deep down there. We don't want to know what's down there. There are things that are underneath of us that are buried, and we hope they stay buried. Memories, failures, doubts, fears, desires, lusts, thirsts, hatreds, all kinds of things that we've got stuffed away down there that we don't want. Psychology has known about this for a long time. We think we're on the surface, but what's really driving us is this stuff down deep under there, the stuff that's way down. 
But what is it that's so bad in your soul? What sharks or jellyfish are living in your soul today, I wonder? I think there's really only a few things that might be down there. First of all, let's go this, things of which we are ashamed. I will not ask for a show of hands. If you honestly answered me, every one of you, if I said, do you have something in your soul of which you are ashamed, every one of us would raise our hands because every one of us does. There's no escaping that. And the best way to deal with it is not to stand up in a public meeting like this and share it. But the fact is we are all in that, well, I was going to say we're in the same boat, but that wrecks my metaphor. We're all in the same submersible vehicle. We're down under there and every one of us knows there are things in our souls of which we are ashamed and we want them to stay buried. We do not want to throw the net back into the ocean and pull that up and Simon Peter didn't want to either. And there are things down there that hurt. There are things that have happened to you, been done to you that hurt you. Things that people did that really were a betrayal of you. Everybody hurts. Everybody's got something down there that is a pain and most of us don't ever want to go and look at that again. Don't want to feel it again, don't want to think about it again, don't want to know it. And if I asked for a show of hands of how many people have got a buried hurt, it would be 100% of us again today. Those things are down there. And we all know it. And that's what Simon Peter didn't want to fish up, but there's also this. The good stuff is down there. Because there's things buried in your soul, too, that you maybe haven't noticed are there, things that are deep down in there. I was on a sabbatical and spent a month working on a dairy farm. How much do you think I knew about farming before that month began? Nothing. Zero, right. I, you know, I knew how to be mugged and be robbed. I knew how to avoid uh, bad neighborhoods. I knew all kinds of things about living in the city, but I didn't know anything about dairy farming. Later on, if you want to ask me, I'll tell you the single most surprising thing about farming that I learned during that month. But at one point at the end of the month, the farmer said to me, I got to tell you, he said, I didn't think this was going to work when you first said it. He says, but I can't believe how brave you have been. He said, we asked you to milk cows and you milked cows. We asked you to drive tractors and you drove tractors. I admittedly got it pretty badly stuck one day, but I drove it. I had no idea what I was doing, but I gave it a try. And he said, I had no idea how brave you would be. And up to that point in my life, it had never occurred to me that I was in particularly a courageous person in any way. Now, I'd done a whole lot of courageous stuff in my life and didn't recognize that's what it was. That farmer had me take a deep look at myself and realize I'm not a coward. I'm not a coward. I may be prudent sometimes, but I'm not a coward. And it changed how I saw myself because that was one of the things that was deep down that I didn't know about. And Simon Peter had all kinds of stuff that was really low down in his soul that he didn't recognize he had. He didn't know he had the leadership abilities that he had. He didn't know that he had the person of spiritual insight like he was. He had no idea how much love for other people he could have in his soul. He thought he was just an ordinary old fisherman. But Jesus saw something different in him and knew that wasn't the case. And when Christ looks at us, Christ sees something deep down in us, not just things for which we're ashamed and not just our hurts, but the things about us that are remarkable. This baby over here, what do you suppose is deep down in her and is going to be? What is she going to grow to be? Oh, fussy, that's what. Good work there, grandfather. We don't know. We don't know where she's headed in life. We know that by the time she is her mother's age, she will have some things of which she is ashamed and some things of which they are still hurt. And yet she has much to find out about herself as to what God wants her to be. How many of you think you have plumbed the depths of what God wants you to be? Now you can raise your hand if you think it's true. Because I haven't yet. I have no idea yet. I am, you know, I am so old right now, you know, I'm getting older. Pretty soon I'm going to be older than Mel over here, all right? Because uh, he's, as far as I can tell, not aging. So I'm gaining on him rapidly. And, and I hope up until that last day that I'm still finding 
things that are buried that God has put there for me and for me to use for the good of others. There's a lot of fish in your ocean yet, folks, and if Jesus calls you to throw those nets in and bring them up, my recommendation is get that boat back together, get out in the water, and throw that net as deep as you can because there's good stuff down there. Amen. You've been listening to a sermon by Rev. Stephen Carnahan, pastor of High Street Congregational Church in Auburn, Maine. If you feel inspired by what you hear, we invite you to join us in person for worship services every Sunday morning, beginning at 10 o'clock. Of course, you can always listen to Steve's sermons on the web. New sermons are posted every Monday by midday. Please take a moment to explore this website for more information about our church or visit our Facebook page at High Street Congregational Church, comma, UCC. We hope that God's presence will be known to you every hour of every day, and that God's blessings will rest upon you now and always. See you next week.